<laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Tara Durheim, the Associate Publisher for the Academic and Monastic Markets at Liturgical Press. And I'm here today with Hans Christofferson, who is the publisher for the Academic and Monastic Markets at Liturgical Press. And we're so pleased to be joined with Sister Judith Sutera, who is a member of the Benedictine Monastery of Mount St. Scholastica in Atchison, Kansas. And she's joining us today to talk about her new inclusive translation of the Rule of St. Benedict. So thanks so much, Sister Judith. We're, we're pleased to have you today. It's my pleasure to be here. So, so Judith, uh, what, um, what prompted you to, uh, to, to do this inclusive in, uh, version of the Rule of Benedict at this point? I think it's really needed right now. Um, my experience, and we read the, the rule every day in the monastery, is that you have um, people who are really devoted to the original version. You know, they want to hear it just the way Benedict wrote it. But some people are really distressed by all of the he language and that it's about men. Um, the second category is there is an option available of, uh, it's kind of a multiple choice version. So wherever it has abbot or he in the original, this one has abbot slash prior slash abbot slash prior <laughs> slash anybody you can think of. And then he's and she's all through it, um, which is difficult to follow. And it works if you have a monastery that's all female but it's still not the best choice when you have a mixed group because if women don't like to hear all the he's, then um, if you change them all to she, that doesn't help uh, the inclusion with the men. And the third and worst option is the people who, when they're publicly reading, try to change the language on the fly. You know, it's like, oh, this is the masculine version. I'm going to try to change it as I go along. And then you have them just murdering the grammar as they go or stumbling over the next word. And every time somebody, as, as a writer and an editor myself, every time somebody has come to me and asked about it, um, those requests were getting more frequent. <laughs> and every time I would complain about some awkwardness that somebody had committed when reading it, they would say, well, why don't you write it? <laughs> so that kind of was the impetus to do this was the fact that there seems to be more of a demand. Yeah, so obviously, yeah, this is, has been in, in the workings for, for a long time, uh, mentally and otherwise. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I think you, uh, you, you had a somewhat unique situation for uh, actually doing the work. Can you say a little bit more about that and how I long did. it took you? I did. People have been encouraging me to do this for a long time, but, you know, I was going on with my life. And then in January, I had planned to have a, a corrective surgery on my leg that was going to require me to be in a cast immobile for two months. So, you know, I thought if I'm going to do this, this is the time to do it. It's never going to get easier. Well, that turned into a much more extensive period because I was in our nursing home um, for my recovery. And when the COVID hit in March, um, I was pretty much stuck there for the next three months. And so I thought it must be God's will that I get this thing done. So, um, you know, it wasn't that I had focused on doing it specifically in a time frame and the time frame just kept getting better and better and so uh, well let's get one positive thing out of this COVID right exactly for sure <laughs> so apart from the being locked up so to speak any other challenges with the translation work itself uh, beyond what you already mentioned in the in the introduction you know it's it Benedict is, is pretty straightforward in his language. It was just a matter of sitting down with the Latin, and my Latin is not fantastic, but he's pretty straightforward in his, uh, in his language. So that when you sit down with all of the, of the translations, the English translations, um, you know, in the last hundred years, there have been basically three and a fourth that uh, Terence Cardong did with his long commentary, but not as a standalone version. Um, really, there's not a lot of difficulty with that. It's a matter of choosing the words that, that, that you want to use. For example, 
you know, do you want to use evil thoughts or temptations? But the, but it's not like there's any controversial kinds of things. You just have to kind of figure out how to take the words that are there and then craft them in a way that they read well without all of the, the masculine language. So um, it, it, it was... It took time, <laughs> but it Go wasn't ahead. daunting in terms of interpretation because Benedict's pretty straightforward. Right. Beyond the, the gender uh, sensitivities uh, in, in the translation work, were there other sections of the, of, the, of the rule that you found particularly challenging or stimulating? Uh, uh, yeah, the biggest difficulty, and this is something that some, write, some readers are going to have trouble with, um, is the leadership language because Abbott is a wonderful word. You know, Benedict's intent was to make it a, associate with Abba, with God, the father. And so uh, when you start playing with that, it's like, how do you express that? Well, it already wasn't working in English, you know, because in the romance languages, you have a, a gender endings. Um, so that you know that they're talking about a man or a woman. But in English, not only do you not have that, but the whole Abba language, we don't have a female equivalent for God. So whenever you're talking about a female, you're losing that Abbot Abba association. So it's just not been there. Um, and you can't really, when you're working with a translation like this, change it to parent. So I had to I had to just decide I was going to use superior because that's something people understand in English. And kind of technically, if you take the word super, the Latin for over, and Benedict talks about this person being over a community, it, it just, it doesn't have the resonance, resonance you know, the, 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 the abbot and mm -hmm. Abbott have, but you can't do anything about it. That's the big problem. <laughs> right. The second one that was difficult with so many people today in terms of, of language um, really don't like the word Lord. Mm -hmm. um, any kind of language that deals with something that they feel is dominant. So they're going to be readers that don't like this because the Lord language is still in there. But again, I didn't know what to do with it because um, Benedict is coming out of a context of the Arian heresy, where they were the Arians were questioning the divinity, the equal divinity of Christ. And so when he did this, he never uses the name Jesus. And he very rarely uses the term Christ. Mm -hmm. Everything is the Lord. Mm -hmm. So if you start taking that out and you're more humanize Jesus you miss his point mm -hmm. so that one was really challenging because there were some places where he uses the Lord for God and I changed those to God any of the Old Testament references but as much as people don't like dominance language I don't know that there's anything you can do with it here and not lose Benedict's appreciation for the fact that Jesus is God and Jesus is over all things and is you know the ultimate power so it stayed and some people won't like it and then they can start changing it on the fly i guess they can and change it to just jesus but i thought that one that use of the word lord was too important and there was mm -hmm. no equivalent mm -hmm. yeah no i can certainly see that dilemma yeah uh, so so who do you think in particular will be uh benefit and be interested in, 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 in an inclusive translation like you have I, done? I think younger people especially are so much more sensitive to language um, and that whole feeling of inclusion. Um, they're not going to have the kind of traditional understanding we have of, well, this was written for men and we just accept that, that they want to see themselves reflected mm -hmm. or they want to see that uh, a, a writing includes everyone. And, and so um, I think they'll find it more comfortable. I think um, that also liturgists 
because we do have this patchwork of people trying to make a gender inclusive version um, available for public reading and it hasn't been there. So I think some of them are gonna be glad that they won't have people trying to change the language on the fly right. or that uh, they can read this version comfortably in a mixed group and feel like everyone, everyone is reflected in Benedict's words. Um, so I think those would be two particular audiences that are gonna appreciate it. Um, again, I just think there's so many people now that that want to see themselves in the language. And, you know, we used to, 40 years ago when the, when the uh, RB80 came out, we were not that conscious of that. Mm -hmm. All right. Very true, very true. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we, uh, we really look forward to bringing this, bringing this to life with you. And, and uh, I agree with you. I think there would be a great level of interest from a variety of, 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 of corners, so to speak, monastics, uh, oblates, and, and people uh, much broader, much more broadly than that. So, so thank you so much. Thank you so I much for, so. for this work. Yeah. I hope Bye -bye. so. I hope it'll, sh it'll express to all kinds of people, and I mean all kinds of people, that Benedict is speaking to them. And that this is something that, that is universal, that it is, is something in which we can see ourselves and, and hear some instruction, no matter who we are. Amen. <laughs> Thank you both. Um, and look for Judas Utera's St. Benedict's Rule and Inclusive Translation to be available uh, spring 2021.